<laughs> if you're talking, stop talking, because now I'm talking another mic. Um, I was in the last December's, uh, so I've been here for three years, so I feel like I should say, forgive me, Father Five Sin, it's been three years since my last FinJS. But um, it's, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. Uh, my name is Niall. I am the founder of AG Grid. Uh, before I start, if the company that you work for actually uses AG Grid, just stick your hand up in the air for a quick sec. Good slow start. Yeah, about, about half. I think that's about half, half of everybody here. Brilliant. Fantastic. Um, if you didn't put your hand up, it's a chance your company actually does use AG Grid, but you don't realize. Um, AG Grid is a data grid component. This is an example of it here. Uh, there's lots of applications that have AG Grid inside it, and we empower those applications. And we're known for our speed, our features, our performance, and especially our enterprise features. This one here is showing lots of live updates and doing row grouping, which is pretty, pretty cool. One of the features that we put in recently, like if you could imagine an application that's using AG Grid, the developer sticks all his data into AG Grid, takes about 10, 15 minutes, and then sets one property, enable charts to true, and you get this. So you basically get the Excel charting experience inside your application, so people aren't leaving your app in order to build charts or do whatever it was they were going to Excel for. But I'm not here to drop the product. I'm not here to talk about AG Grid, but I needed to explain that so that everybody is able to understand what the talk is about, which is our challenge in supporting multiple frameworks in AG Grid. So there's a few different frameworks out there that are popular with JavaScript application developers. Um, React and Angular are probably the most popular ones. And what these developers would like, for example, a React developer, they would love if we just wrote a data grid for React and didn't bother with the rest of the, uh, of the frameworks. But that's not very good for us, because we want to support all the frameworks, not just React. So a challenge that component providers like us have is, how can we support all of the frameworks, but without having to write our grid again from scratch for each framework? And there's basically two mechanisms that companies like us do to achieve this. The first I just mentioned, we're writing from scratch. That's porting. But the problem with porting is that our dev team in AG Grid would then be supporting five or six different data grids. Our expertise would be spread, and the product ends up not as good. So what we want to do is get our dev team working on one grid. And then that results in the wrap. Uh, wrapping means that our, JavaScript, our grid will be written in JavaScript, and then we have a thin layer of Angular or React or Vue on top of it to make it look like it's in the framework of your choice, a bit like you know, sheep and wolf's clothing. There is a wolf in sheep's clothing, one of those. So, the talk I'm going to give on top, so what I'm going to talk about is that challenge, how we overcame it, and how today we actually do have a really, really cool solution. What we used to do was wrap. We'd have one JavaScript data grid, and then we would wrap that for the different frameworks. The two most popular frameworks today are Angular and React. Angular developers are like, cool, that's fine. They didn't care too much. React developers are like, you're not a React grid. I don't want to use you. I want everything to be written in React because I'm a React developer. Sorry, I wasn't meant to take the piss out of React developers. <laughs> but, but that's kind of truthful. React developers, they're passionate about the applications that they write. And they would like to have pure React implementations when they write their applications. Um, what used to happen last year, uh, I'll show you why React developers would be annoyed if it was just a JavaScript grid. This application, this example here on the left-hand side is a sample app, my people's way, sorry. And on the right-hand side is what the app would look like. Um, you can see here some columns defined, some columns in the grid on the right-hand side. It's your basic React, um, React JavaScript. On the top here, we've got a component. So this would be a custom component. So the application wants to customize the grid to put some buttons or a hyperlink into a cell, a very common use case in applications. It would then be attached to a column here. It's attached to the age. And then there we can see in the right-hand side, the age column is showing some more information. As a React developer, if you remember, we're written in JavaScript. A React developer would then go to the developer console. And part of the developer console for React is the component browser, where you can browse React components. And what the developer would see is all these React components here, which is the customizations. And they would just exist inside this blob of one AG grid component, to which they'd be asking, but where's the AG grid cells? Where's the rows? Where's this complex grid structure that I'd expect from AG grid? The answer would be it's not there because we're not using React. So there was a smell there for the React developer where they kind of go, hold on a sec, you're not really React. But it got worse. Because we're a JavaScript library and we had React here 
inside our JavaScript library, you might, as a React developer, if any of you are, wonder how did we achieve that? And the answer is with portals. But portals come with an expense, and that can be seen if I inspect the DOM. So we're going to inspect the DOM for one of the cells that has a customization in it. And then we can see here in the box, this is what's inside the cell. This bit here, the div, that's our grids div. This bit down here is the customization. Then this div here is the AG React container. That's the portals container. This extra div would appear every time you customize a cell. If you're customizing all the cells, it could be 100 cells on the screen at any given time, then that's an extra 100 divs. And React developers would be annoyed with that because their DOM was more heavy than it should be. So that's the problem we had about two years ago. And um, I, we as a team needed to solve how can we make our grid appeal more to React developers who really want our grid to be written in React. And then I was having a shower one morning after breakfast. I think I had eggs and toast or something. And it just hit me. All these different frameworks, whether it be React or Angular Review or whatever else, they all do exactly the same thing. They all produce DOM and CSS. They have to, because what they're resulting goes to the same browsers, so it has to work with these browsers. The difference is how to go about that. So then I thought, what if we got AG Grid, and if we took away all of these DOM updates, basically setting the templates and setting the styles, and we extracted that out and kept all the logic in AG Grid, and then delegated that last step to the framework, what would that look like? Well, what it used to look like is with a JavaScript grid, which AG Grid is, this is what we would do for something like set the width of a cell. So you could imagine the user is resizing a cell, then this logic would get executed on each cell. We'd have stuff that gets calculated here, which has got nothing to do with the DOM, nothing to do with the framework, and then this last bit here updates the DOM, where we get the DOM element, and then we set the width on the style, which is direct DOM manipulation, not using a framework. What we do now is we separate it out, all of this DOM manipulation, into an interfaces layer, and it now looks like this. So the same code, but it's no longer a component, it's a controller. It does all this logic, and then when it gets to the last step, it delegates to the component. And we've got two implementations, one for JavaScript that does as we did before, and then one for React, which uses React, JSX, state, et cetera, et cetera. So we brought that to market at the start of this year. Yep, started this year. This is the exact same application as we saw before. The difference is we're now using the latest version of AG Grid using the React rendering engine. So the grid is using React all the way through when you're using AG Grid in React. If you look at the developer tools, as we did before, and we'll go to the component hierarchy, you'll see here, these are all React components. So the grid is using React for the headers, it's using React for the cells. If we then go and inspect the DOM and click on the, go for the component, that was the customization. This component now lives inside an AG Grid cell comp, which lives inside an AG Grid row comp, and so on and so on. So it's a full React implementation of the grid's rendering. React developers loved it. The grid behaved exactly the same as it did before. The exact same features carried across because all that logic was carried across. So if you go to our documentation, the JavaScript version and the Angular version and the React version, they all do exactly the same thing. The only difference is that last little piece at the end of how we render it to the screen. So you would think, happy days. Oh, one last thing I forgot to say here. Then if you inspect the DOM, because we're not using portals anymore, it's all native in React, this extra div that appeared in my previous slide is no longer there. So we have a nice clean DOM, again, making the developers happier who are using AG Grid. So almost done, released this into production, and um, something surprising came to our attention. The React version was slower. Um, I was a bit surprised because React is meant to be fast, right? It was slower in some instances like this. This is resizing a column. The top animation is using React, and the bottom animation is using our JavaScript implementation. You can see that the React one is a bit slower. It's noticeable as the column is getting more narrow. You can see that the mouse is leading the column. The column is taking longer to catch up. So I built myself a little test, which was to set the width of a column. You need to have a, a test that you can reproduce across different scenarios rather than just dragging the mouse yourself. And I put it into the profiler. This is the React profile. What's interesting here for me is health and safety. Um, this up here is our AG grid code, this chunk up here. Then as it goes down to this here, that's React code. So we do our work, then it delegates to React, and then React does work. This is interesting when we compare it to the JavaScript profile, which is this one here. 
JavaScript profile is much quicker. It took 11 milliseconds compared to 60. So React was six times slower. What's also interesting to me is this code here, these methods, they're actually the same methods whoop, as up here. The exact same code is getting executed. The difference is that down here, you would set the DOM. Up here, we wouldn't set the DOM. We would tell React to do something. What we would tell React was, well, actually, you wouldn't tell it anything. We set the state, set the state to set the width, then the JSX would get compiled, the JSX would build a virtual DOM, then React to compare that virtual DOM to the previous virtual DOM, then React to go, hi, you're trying to change the width. Which I think that's fucking stupid. I told you setting the width to begin with. Why did you have to build all this DOM shit? But that's what React actually does, okay? That's like the concept of the virtual DOM. And there's some situations where the DOM does not make things faster, and this is one of them. So yeah, I've been doing a lot of daydreaming, doing a lot of podcasts. I did this stream, this podcast with this dude, Ryan Cronito. Anybody know what Ryan Cronito is famous for? Does anybody understand what I'm talking about with this presentation? <laughs> yeah? What, what's he do? What does Ryan do? No, sorry, I, I, I don't know who Ryan is. Oh, but you understand the talk, okay. <laughs> Very good. Ryan is the creator of a new framework called SolidJS. Now, there's a lot of new frameworks out there. Um, none of them have really taken off. React and Angular are very dominant. Um, but Ryan created this thing called SolidJS. It looks like React. The code is the same shape. It uses JSX, but doesn't use a virtual DOM. So I decided, fuck, sorry, fuck. Are we going live? Is there a camera in this? There is, nope, there is a camera. We can edit that out. Yeah, OK, thanks. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> He's a creator of Solid JS. Yes. It looks like React, but if you shake off all the shit bits from React, you're left with Solid. That's the way I see it. So I wrote the rendering engine in Solid as well and compared it, and this is the result that I got. Solid was not as fast as JavaScript, but it was definitely in the same ballpark, and then React was out slower. Now, this is slightly unfair because it's a specific, sorry, it's a specific example, but it's not contrived. This is what the users told us, and that's how it came to our attention. So it's a real-world example of where React was slow. There's other ways that you can measure performance. So rather than just updating a style, what about creating DOM and destroying DOM? So I come up with this test. Separate test, jump to a certain index, to a certain scroll position. AG Grid virtualizes its rows. What that means is as you scroll, it then draws the rows onto the screen. So it only shows the rows that you can see for a given scroll position. So jumping to row 1000 forces the grid to do a complete refresh of all of its rows. I then tested this against the tree variants, and I got this result here. They're the same ballpark. So for DOM creation, the different frameworks, well, React and Solid in this case, and JavaScript behaved in a similar way. So what is the summary and conclusion? I find this really interesting um, because I was expecting the React to go faster, but it didn't really go faster. But for us, releasing AG Grid as React was brilliant. It was really, really well received. And this smell of React developers saying, you're not really written in React, it just went away. And we are now a pure React implementation. But we observed that piece where React was slower. So in AG Grid, behind the scenes, you don't need to know about this, but we don't use React for just setting those styles. We use React for all of the component creation, but we don't for setting the styles in the classes. So you get that full experience of React, but where React is a bit slow, then we just do it by ourselves. Um, in AG Grid today, we've got rendering engines for React and for Solid. Solid because I was bored and I did one for Solid. Um, but we didn't do it for Angular and Vue, the other big frameworks that we're supporting. The reason we didn't is we didn't have that perception problem. And also, Angular and Vue, they don't require portals, which I said was a problem, to put the component, their customizations into AG Grid. We can actually do that in those frameworks without this extra development inside. Um, my name is Niall. This has been great. Thank you very much for listening to my talk. Hope you enjoyed the evening. Take care.